Well, it has been an overwhelming couple of weeks in our country, hasn't it? Things have just been so hard, especially when you hear of people murdered as they go into a grocery store because of the color of their skin and children murdered in a school where they are supposed to be safe. And it just can be so overwhelming. All of the pain, all of the loss, all of the grief, it can just enter into us and overwhelm us into places of despair, places of hopelessness, places of not knowing what to do and where we can fall into deep cynicism. If you didn't listen to Barb's sermon on Sunday, I would encourage you to go and to listen because it's really powerful and really speaks into who we are supposed to be as Christians, living into a people of love and action in the world. This week we're talking about chapter five in James Harnish's book, Make a Difference. And chapter five is actually about entering in to the pain and to um, the loss of other people and our own lives, entering into that crucible of pain and being able to find a place of hope. We all are going to go through moments of pain. That is part of being human. We all are going to suffer. We all are going to experience loss in different ways. A lot of times in our society, though, we want to run away from that. We want to focus on the happy, focus on the good, and get through the pain and that hard stuff as quickly as possible. But really, we have to embrace that part of our humanity because it's in those places that God meets us. It's in those places that Jesus's love can enter in in a new way. Um, as we are stretched and as we are challenged, we have these new openings for God to enter into our lives in a new way. And so, pain and struggle, grief, loss, those are all places that allow God to be able to enter in in a new way. It is about um, us allowing our faith to become real. So let's first talk about our own pain, our own struggles, our own loss. It's important for us in those times to be able to empty ourselves and allow God to enter in. To be able to cry the words that are on our hearts, like why me, why this person, why my family, and how long, how long do I have to go through this? All of that is biblical, but I think a lot of times we shy away from those words of crying out to God, of being upset or angry or questioning God because we're afraid um, that that might hurt our relationship with God, that it might allow us to not enter into God's love in that way. But if we look at the Psalms, um, David wrote time and time again these outpourings of his heart, exactly what he was feeling. How long, O oh God, will you forget me forever? That is how Psalm 13 starts. In the grief, in the pain, in the honesty of what is happening in David's life. That's what we need to do as well. To enter into our own pain, our own loss, our own humanity and cry out those words to God. Because God knows them already. And God is big enough to handle them. So being honest with what is going on inside of us. But the beautiful thing about Psalm 13 especially is that David doesn't just stop with that. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? 
those questions and that despair, David then turns his focus to God and says, but I trust and I remember and I know. Sometimes we are afraid that that darkness will swallow us up, that grief will just come in and enter in and it will swallow us whole. But if we can remember that God is faithful, if we can look backwards in our lives and see the times that God has been faithful to us, if we can open our eyes up to those around us who are bringing us meals or sending us cards or praying for us or showing up in ways um, that are helpful for us and being present with us in our pain and loss, we can see God at work in our own lives. And then once we move through that pain, that loss, that grief, it opens us up to being able to serve God in a new way. It opens us up into the love and grace of God that other people need to experience in their lives. When our hearts are broken, then it allows for us to be able to understand how God's heart is broken in the midst of deep pain and loss and struggle allows us to come into, enter into somebody else's pain and let them know that they are not alone. And so David Harnish, or James Harnish, talks about that in his book, about how we are to just empty ourselves and allow Jesus to come in, to go and to be present with people in their pain and their loss, that we don't have to have the right words to be able to say, but, in a, but allowing God to just be present through us for that person. It's the most powerful thing we can do. So this week I've been thinking a lot about how overwhelming it can be in this world. Right? There is so much pain, so much hurt. The news bombards us every single day with stories that are heart wrenching of people in deep moments of grief and sadness and loss. What can we do to be able to remain present in that, to not be overwhelmed by the struggles and the heartaches and the deep pain and terror and loss that people experience? I want to give you a few tips for that um, today as we're talking about such hard things. The first um, part of being able to be present is to be able to do less or cut back on things. So maybe you don't watch 24-hour news. Maybe you catch the news one time a day for 30 minutes. Maybe you do less of social media. Maybe you do less of getting into um, heated discussions. Whatever that looks like for you, do less. And then be intentional. Be intentional about where you spend your energy, where you focus your time, where you focus on the things that God wants you to focus on. One of the ways in which we can add some intentionality is to protect our mornings. To protect a little bit of time in the day before everything gets going, maybe with a devotion or prayer or a walk in which we can ground ourselves in God's love to be able to face whatever comes our way. And then being able to nurture gratitude to be able to look around us and to see the ways in which we are thankful, to be able to express that thankfulness, to thank those who are helping us, thank those who are serving us. But nurturing that gratitude helps us to stay focused and remain in God's love. And being present in the now, not trying to escape, not trying to think about the future, but being present in the now with those who we are with, with the things that are happening around us. And some of the ways that we can practice that is to go for a walk in nature, to be able to listen to the birds sing, or to be able to do a practice of meditation, of just deep breathing. This reminds us how God is present with us in our 
very moment that we are breathing that breath. It reminds us that God's presence is with us always. And then to have more curiosity, to look around us and to be curious about not only what people are going through, but also the good that they are experiencing in their lives. To be quiet and to listen to the stories around us. So one of these books that I picked up this year that I really enjoyed, that has helped me through thinking about devastation and hard times that people go through is this book called No Cure for Being Human by Kate Bowler. Now, Kate is uh, a woman who is in her probably late 30s, early 40s. Um, she is a has a doctorate in, um, I believe it's in theology. Um, she works with, uh, she went to school at Duke and she's, she's a teacher there. But she was diagnosed with cancer in a really aggressive form of cancer. They gave her a limited time to live. And so she talks a lot about that process, about living in the now, because you don't know if you will have a future. But one of the things I wanna leave you with is um, this story that she has about a trip that she went to with her husband to the Grand Canyon. And she talks about just off Route 66, she finds this tiny chapel that is surrounded by ponderosa pine. There's nothing around for miles, and so she's curious. And so she tries the door, and she finds it unlocked, and she walks tentatively inside. She writes, the room was a miniature sanctuary, unheated and inelegant. The floor was loose gravel, and someone had nailed together some benches to face a chunk of stone serving as an altar. But the light of the setting sun, an incandescent orange, poured through the windows and lit up the walls, which were covered with graffiti, both fresh and faded. I ran my fingers along the black ink covering the altar and the pen marks gouging the soft wooden walls. Almost every inch of it was covered with words. I miss you every day. Please let my daughter be the way she was before. Did you make it to heaven, my love? Helen, I am weak, but you already knew that. She continues to write and she says that she looks up and there are hundreds of pieces of paper that are stuffed into the rafters and the cracks and the seams in the wall. All the people who have fallen into the cracks in the universe, undone by the smallest of tragedies. She writes, we try to outsmart our limitations and our bad, bad luck, but here we are shouting the truths into the abyss. There is no cure for being human. Someone had built a monument to the void and it was full to the brim. That is where Kate found herself. She hears her husband come in and enter in and they look around at all of the words, all of the prayers that people have spoken, have written down, have placed in the cracks. And she says to her husband, I used to think we were the only ones. You see, we all live like that. Without assurances, without formulas, we are desperate for the secret to carry on in the midst of pain. So she asks her husband if, she, if he thinks that anyone would mind if she added something. And he says no, and so he lets her have a moment of privacy. And then she comes out of this chapel and he asks her what she wrote. And so she says that she wrote, Doom Sapiro Sparrow, which is Latin for, while I breathe, I hope. My friends, even in this world of pain and suffering loss, while we breathe, we hope. We hope in God who will never leave us. We hope in Jesus who says that he prepares a place for us. We hope that in the midst of great tragedy and struggle, 
that we are able to find a new purpose in our life, a way to make a difference in the world with our love and with our action. We hope because we know that God is with us and will never leave us. While we breathe, we hope. So take a few moments to breathe, to breathe in the fresh air, to ground yourself in God's love, to be present in the now. And as you breathe, remember that we hope. We ground ourselves in God's hope to be able to be present and to face whatever is to come.